Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the old channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in. Um, we are going to get back on this Mercury three-cylinder inline 19 and 88 two-stroker with oil injection. Um, but also got to do some stuff on a little cutie. It's a cutie. I'm going to show you. Um, I got to do that interruptus for a fella coming by tomorrow. So we'll get that done and I'll show you what it is. And uh, the Mercury, we're going to get along up into this cowling. I, uh, I was looking at this. Now here's the one that I got to get on there. I don't know why that's so loose. Right? Is that the right size? No. But I've got to tighten that up yet. But here's the bracket that I had that wasn't broke. You see? And there's the bracket. And that'll be, that tightens up against there. And then those two holes there bolt to the power head. Well, then I went to take this one out in true salty abused outboard fashion. The bolt snapped off. So I just drilled a hole all the way through it. I don't know if you can, there's a little hole there. I just, and I'll just put a bolt through that. And it'll do the same thing. Now, I got all these broken bits. See, I got the bits. There's bits everywhere. Um, but I was looking at these. And somewhere, yeah, there's one. That one could be used. I thought I had another one. Might be in there. But anyway, uh, those little funnels that the pins on the actual sides of the hood, I have two. One and two that aren't broke. So I was thinking maybe somehow I could, you know, splice them together they've got holes right there and uh you know looking at this other one i don't see what them holes would be for this other one don't have them let's see it's got those those would be there those would be like that oh that's the middle that's the actual middle holes well, anyway, I might be able to take with those two holes and fasten those together somehow with a little plate steel and then drill a hole for the middle. Might. Don't know. We'll find out because that's what we're going to do. Take all these bits and get this piece and... Uh, I got those rubber strips back on there. <laughs> with the amount of goo I put on there, I don't think they're coming off. So, we're moving along with it. And so, again, 72 stroker, 1988. Let's get to it. Okay. If you can see this piece here, you can see how thick this is right here. That thickness right there. Okay. So what I did was I went over to Diablo and I cut. See how thin that is there now? So what I can do, and I did the same thing to the other piece, and then what we will do is take these two pieces and put them together. And there's my bolt hole, and then I'll have my little funnels. You can see it, right? You see what, where we're going. And then what I'm also going to do is put a piece of metal here. So the bolt will go through that nice flat chunk of metal. And then 
that will bolt once I get everything put all together. It ain't going to be the prettiest, that's for sure. Then that will bolt right there. Actually, yeah, like that. And then I'll have my uh, two funnels. Then we'll worry about getting it stuck to the power head. I'll be back. There's my little pieces of metal I'll use to give it more support. Well, there's the finished product. You can see where I cut those two in half. And then I put a piece of metal back here, a piece of metal here, and I actually took this as a self-tapping bolt. So it kind of tapped its way through all of that. It ain't the prettiest, but you'll have those two up there, those two here, and then that there. And I think that'll do pretty good. And this, of course, bolts to the uh, power head right here. And I don't know if I'm going to worry about having something to bolt to the power head down here, because I got these two clamps, and I think gravity's going to do a pretty good job there, so... You can see the end of the bolt right there, and like I said, that's all self-tapping stuff. And there is, right in this piece here, where the bolt goes through in this piece right here, there's an aluminum insert, so I tap the aluminum. So that should be pretty strong.
my side By my side Yeah, I know I wrote your heart Always throw you up in the yard Put you away But I'm gonna take care of you Remember that little guy? Well, I have a fella called me. He said, hey, you got anything around like a six or an eight horse? Well, yeah. A seven per five is kind of like a six or an eight horse. So he's supposed to come by here tomorrow and take a look at this thing. See if he wants to purchase it for his raft, he said. So he has an eight foot raft. What do you think? That work on an eight foot raft? It's a cutie.
seven, Kurt five. You remember all that VRO oil I spilt on the deck? Time to clean that mess up. I've been sliding and slipping for two days on this stuff. And the wind finally let down. What a mess! So we're going to spray it with soap, give it a scrubby dub dub, rubby dub in the tub. It got everywhere. It caught everywhere. What a mess. Ain't going to be no spray deal. It's going to be scrubby dub deal. It's a mess. In hell. My good scrub brush. Nice bristles. Yeah, I got had a an Exxon Valdez in here. That was a bad time for Alaska and Kodiak. Got impacted pretty hard. Music on the radio. Time to clean this mess up. This is how this thing works. I'm not sure which one. I guess this one will have to come off first. Like so. Stay put. Stay put. The... And then this one. Okay, you can see the pins there. There's the two pins. Okay, and let me put this over here. I've still got to button all these wires up, but we're just doing hood things right now. There's my hokey homemade, but it's actually quite strong. Everything is pretty darn snug. I mean, it's supposed to vibrate some. That's why they got the, the AV rubber mounts in there. Um, but it hooks in there and then I made these and I kept my two little funnels then I got the upper ones up here and uh, like I said we got a lot to do yet but as far as the hood goes we're getting there and I can still beef it up more if I want oh, but kind of tricky you got to line up these pins sort of kind of well you can see in there I guess and then yeah I have to make sure they're in top and bottom top and the bottom and so when you get to this other side it's kind of hard to see them pins I can see where them funnels are, are kind of necessary here. Yeah. You would need them. 
couple wires in. And then you put this deal there, except I only want it to go in the first one. And there you go. You got your bonnet. it. And it still needs a lot of cosmetic stuff on that bonnet. Sorry about that. But she's good and on there. Real good. And uh but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the way it goes. There. That's better. And uh, I'll spin it around, show you the back. And there. So she actually came together really nice for as bad as it was abused. Turn back his camera up some. Yeah. Um, all the seams seem to fit really nice. That way you can see the seams up top. And I glued these rubber pieces in here. And they're, they're not going anywhere. And you can see this is cut out to fit pretty tight tolerances there. See these? So it's it's got to be on there and this overlaps the other one. So it's got to be it's got to be pretty thoit. Owie, owie. We fixed that with some Swiss glass. Uh, that one didn't go through. Yeah, almost. Well, little Swiss glass, little primer, little paint. The old 70 is coming along. One more little step done. I'll be back. Okay, also on this uh, motor, the Telltale was snapped off. This went through a hole right here. And so what I did was took a piece of copper tubing and then I put a zip tie here and a zip tie there so it can't go in or out. And also I kind of bent it around to the side and cut it at an angle. This one just went straight down and the P came straight out this way. Well, I wanted it to come out to the side so I could see it better from you know, from the, the steering station in the boat or whatnot. So I rigged that up. That, that should be sufficient because this one snapped off when it hit the ground. So that's one more little bit that's out of the way. And uh, so she ought to pee good and I should be able to see it better. So, one more little step. Okay, I'm just going to take these raised parts of this bonnet and just take a nut driver or something similar and just push those down in. They're kind of sticking up. Then I'll see how that one's bulged out this way. I'll try and push them back in. There we go. And make a little bit of a divot, a little bowl. There we go. And little strands of fiberglass. That's not bad. That's a good thing. Okay. Then I'll take my fairing disc and fair this down before I put the fiberglass, Swiss glass, or whatever in there. I'll be back. Okay, I got this like fairing disc here. I'm just gonna knock this down a little bit.
That should do. Now let me get some stuff mixed up. I okay, so what I'm using to fill these holes is a uh, Bondo glass. Um, the original product I think was called Swiss, gla Swiss glass or something like that. Bondo glass. And all it is is like really fine fiberglass strands that have fiberglass resin mixed in with it. <clears throat> and I think the destructions say what you want to do is get it like a golf ball size amount. You can see I got like three golf ball size amounts. And then it says lay a bead right across the top from one end of the other, from one end to the other. And that's what I'm going to do. And what I mean by bead is this cream hardener stuff. You just, it comes with the can taped to the top. <clears throat> so I'll start with the one in the middle. And if I don't use it, what I don't use, I'll uh, put back in the can. But only put the hardener in what you're going to use because the rest will harden up. So then you just mix it up. There you go. Get it good and mixed so all the blue disappears into the green and it'll turn a little, little bit lighter in color you can see that's happening okay. this will probably be enough to do what I have to do and I'm just using an old board here as my mixer tray or whatever just a piece of wood okay so now we take that and put and mash it into that hole. That's what you want to do. And knock them so. A little bit there. Bloop. A little bit there. Bloop. And a little bit there and just mash it in, smudge it all around. Smudge it. Okay. Go get that up there. And a lot of these little imperfections, if they're got any size to them, you can put a little bit on those. That one's got some. Oops. Oh yeah, there's another one right there. I didn't even see that. Let me get my little thing. And then we'll sand all this down once it hardens up. Not going for perfection here, just keep the salt water out. That's really all I think I'm going to need. Okay, and then what you can do if you want it to come out a little smoother is you can take you some masking tape.
and mask right over that. That tape will peel right off and it'll be a lot flatter and neater and I'll show you that when we peel it off. You don't have to work super quick with this stuff and see you can kind of mold this in too to the shapes you want. You know. overlap them tapes. You guys in the military, you know what all this is about with this tape overlapping in your, in your uniform. Okay. So, just do it like that. Yeah. And you take your little you take your little thingy and just flatten it out. Now you still, we're gonna still have to do some sand on the stand. That's, and then in your shapes. And we'll let that harden up. Now, for the stuff I didn't use, you want to take and put it right back in this can. But, don't use the stick you were using. Because it's got the hardener on. So get you another stick. A clean stick. Get you the clean stick. Oops, sorry. And then you can take the stuff you didn't use and put it right back in the can, staying away from the stuff that had the hardener. Okay, so then you can just let that harden up too. And put your lid back on. There we go. So, one more little step on the mercury. We'll get that, let it harden up for an hour, two hours, who knows. And we'll peel it off, do a little sanding, priming, and a painting. Well, we got, uh, the hood all kind of rigged back up and taken care of. It's not the prettiest, but it seems to be really strong. We got the P-tube routed, and I like the way I got the little aluminum piece bent to the side so that as the telltale peas, I can see it from up front. And we've got the bonnet hood all glassed up and drying and uh, so it's looking good I still have to figure out my wiring and all for the uh, tilt trim this motor here had two wires or has two wires it has a green and a blue the tilt motor that came off of this thing had a green, a blue, a black, and then it had three little small wires, two of them tan, one of them looks kind of grayish or purple. 
So I'll have to sort all that out. I'll have to sort it out, you know. That's what I'll do. All right, but I want to give you one more little tip for you new folks starting out, you younger folks that have come up, somebody gives you an old project motor that's been tossed out on the ground and uh, you're going to go at it. Something that I do and I recommend the broken pieces all the broken parts that you are not using you know I, I've already got it taken care of I fabricated some stuff and this and that and so I don't need this do not throw these away do not throw these away until at least a month after you're satisfied with your motor these broken pieces, as soon as you throw it out, you're going to go, I could have used that. Don't throw, you just put them in a little bag, label them, set them aside. After you've got everything refabricated, refurbed, and put back together, after a trip or two on the water, and you're like, you know, I don't see where I need to do anything else to it, it seems like it's good. It's the way I want it still hang on to those for another week. Um, it doesn't matter how broke up they are. Um, I mean, if you look in that bag, everything's broke. But I will hang on to this little bag of broken parts until I am satisfied that I've done all I can do for this motor um, as making it as good as I can get it back. So hang on to them broken pieces. You may need them to reshape and refabricate something just like I did for these little funnels. Um, I took the four of the broken ones and made two good ones and now I can put the hood on. So save the broken pieces no matter how broke. Um, and I don't want to sound like a record that's... anyway. So it's getting a little late and I think I'm about where I need to stop on this one for this video. Let that fiberglass dry up and do its thing. And uh, so that's going to be a wrap on this. And as always, there's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.